So as you guys know that Minecraft 1.16 has finally released for all platforms of Minecraft as the Java edition and the Bedrock edition. Do I need to talk about Bedrock edition? Alright, but with the addition of 1.16, the update, and the nether update, we have different kinds of mobs, different kinds of blocks, different new biomes. There's lots of exploration to do in the nether. And also we have some different things to test out, some different game mechanics to see, some different opportunities, new advancements definitely, and also some other things to do as well. You can make different farms, you can test out the new redstone changes. There's lots of things to do. And in this video, I'll be talking about seven things that you can do in Minecraft 1.16. I mean, you should definitely try these out. Definitely. That's that's a poor man's zoom. Currently, we don't have Optifine, so that's like poor man's zoom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's move on with this video. The farming stuff in front of me, I have this super simple Nylium farm, which is designed by me. And it's basically an AF cable farm as well. What you need to do is you need to stand on this block here. And in front of me, you can see that there's a zero tick piston setup. And we also have some of the new target block mechanics in here as well, where the redstone is actually connecting to this target block, causing this piston to be zero ticked. We also have a dispenser here with some bone meal inside of it, which will be helpful in making nylium here. And you can also see that there are two pistons here, which are toggleable using levers. And basically these are going to push this crimson nylium and the warp nylium like that. And it's going to push it next to our netherrack line, which is going to be sitting here when we are going to place it in front of this piston. So basically what is going to happen is due to a game mechanic, when netherrack is going to be connected to adjacent nylium blocks, when you dispense bone meal onto another rack, it's basically going to get the same color as the adjacent block has. So here we have crimson nylium. So I'm going to set this to being crimson nylium. I'm going to flick the lever and it's going to be pushed in front there. Now I'm going to sit here and I'm going to place another rack like this. You can see that all of these blocks get pushed in front and we have crimson nylium blocks forming all together. Now you can even switch this to having nylium blocks. So I'm going to quickly switch this there to nylium blocks now you can I'm going to remove them so that you don't see any disparities because this nether rack which is going to come in next will be connected to both crimson and warp nylium blocks so that might be a bit random so I'm going to remove all of the crimson here now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to place this block like this. you can see that all of the warp nylium starts forming here now this can run into basically any kind of breaking system you can have a blast chamber and if you want to have a look at Il Mango's Blast Chamber design, I'm going to share you a link down in the description. Please go watch it. And uh, yeah, so that is that for the Nylum Farm. You can also toggle both of these pistons on and you can have a completely random setup. I mean, you can you can have a completely random generation of Nylum. You can basically create all of the, both of the types of Nylum equally. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to show you. here. You can see that we have different kinds of nylium. Now clearly you can see that the crimson nylium is more, but definitely the formation of nylium is completely random because this nylium is connected to adjacent nylium, which is of both types here. So this is the nylium farm. Okay, now let's move on. Just like nylium, you can also create a basalt farm and the formation of basalt actually depends upon a game mechanic. Is that when lava comes in contact with blue ice with soul soil underneath it, the lava actually gets converted into obsidian. Sorry, not into obsidian, into basalt. Now, the formation of basalt is pretty slow because lava flows are also quite slow in the overworld. As you can see, it takes a lot of time to generate basalt. Now, if you were to make a manual farm like this, it's definitely too slow. And uh, you might be thinking that you should build it in the nether. And uh, because lava flows in the nether are definitely faster. But I don't think making a manual farm is really a very good solution because the nether is now a very hostile place and you won't like to sit an AFK at this spot here because you might be attacked by mobs, who knows. <laughs> so I would suggest you make an automatic farm which I'll be showing you in the next clip. Here we go. So in front of me, I've automated this simple and basic basalt farm into a piston pushing system as well. So basically how this works is when I will remove this piston by turning off this lever here the lava will be able to flow into this space causing basalt to form and when the basalt will form this observer is going to detect that causing this piston to fire out its block here which is the observer and during that push this observer is going to briefly power this piston causing the basalt to be removed out of its space so that more basalt can form 
Now this system is only configured for this piston to push when a block is in front. So basically this will not fire twice and if it fires twice this may cause a redstone clock to form which may cause the build to break. So if I turn this lever off you can see that basalt will start forming and it's being pushed every time it forms. Now this can run into any kind of your blast chambers but this also comes with a problem. So I'm going to show you that. The problem with basalt is that it has an appreciably high blast resistance as you'll be seeing from this explosion. You see that the TNT only blows up one layer of the basalt, leaving the other layers completely intact out there. So this means that making a very large blast chamber for the explosion of basalt is not really advisable because you can see that there will be lots of basalt left over in the machine which will, be, which will actually mean that there will not be a lot of basalt drops from the farm which means there will be lots of losses in the farm and that would mean that the farm is not really efficient. So with that let's move on with our next thing. Of course, with the addition of piglins in the nether update, you can make yourself a piglin bartering farm. Here you can see I have my design of a small and tireable piglin bartering farm. You can just place a lot of them next to each other and you can just make it really efficient. How this works is that we have a piglin sitting inside of this chamber and a dispenser which dispenses a lot of gold. You can see a lot of gold up here. We also have some lot of gold. You can see that our hopper is completely backed up. All right. So as I was saying, we have this dispenser with gold that is consistently dispensing items into this piglin so that it will barter, it will admire the gold first and then it will barter items for us like that and uh, basically how this works that you should first throw in a lot of gold inside of this chest so you need to kick start this farm and then actually the uh, gold falls to this hopper this comparator will detect that and it will power the piston causing it to push this observer which will activate the dispenser and will kickstart the machine until all of the gold has run out obviously. So this is one, this is our piglin bartering farm. Now piglins also give a lot of useful items as you can see in this chest they have been accumulating here. We've got some magma cream, I don't know if gravel is a really important stuff. Nether quartz, yes we have a, a renewable source of nether quartz as well. Soul sand, nether bricks, string, crying obsidian splash potions of fire resistance. We also have some fire resistance potions that's also quite nice. We can also get obsidian from this. So it's also a pretty decent obsidian farm. I mean not so fast but I guess yeah. And we also have some other stuff like glowstone dust and uh, leather ender pearls and we also have boots of soul speed. One and so any kind of soul speed. And you can also get the soul speed enchantment book. And that is the, this is the only source that you can get the soul speed 3 or any kind of level of soul speed, for instance. So you can only barter with piglins to get the soul speed enchantment naturally. Now, why do you require the soul speed enchantment is because I have a demonstration. I mean, I can demonstrate here, but actually I currently don't have any soul speed boots on myself. You know what? <laughs> I'll get them right. I'll get them right away. So boom <laughs> so now i have got myself soul speed 3 boots as you can see in my in my inventory right there i can just show you that there you go you have soul speed 3 boots and there's another right boots as well so yeah if we walk on soul sand you can see we have quite a decent amount of speed even if we walk on soul sand we have a good amount of speed but generally if we don't have the boots on we walk really slow on slow sand as you can see we literally get slowness but now we actually add this onto our boots, we get speed on all of this. So that is pretty nice. And uh, moving on to our piglin bartering farm, which is over there. And this is a really simple farm, as you can see. It not, does not require many resources. It is, um, what to say, <laughs> quite a lot of items in here. Except that we don't see any Soul Speed 3 books or any of that sort. But... This is one thing you should definitely try in the nether update and that is a piglin bartering farm because these things are really helpful. Now, one question is, is that you might require a lot of gold to actually fuel this kind of a thing. So you actually need a very efficient gold farm to actually fuel this kind of a piglin bartering farm. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and making a gold farm could be a really tricky task because it requires a lot of resources. So it is a pain. <laughs> it is a real pain. So let's move on to the next item. There's definitely lots of gold farm designs made by other YouTubers like Nemborn and Raiseworks. 
you should definitely go out and check those videos as well because they are pretty nice and the coal farms are also very efficient so let's move on also you need to prevent your piglins from despawning so you can give them a name i have applied a name tag on this so actually i named him i named him subscribe or you can give it some kind of armor that it can wear so that it does not despawn so let's move on this has happened quite a lot of times in this video that i have said the sentence let's move on in this video and there's probably going to be lots more coming so please don't mind that now the next thing that you should definitely try out is making a hoglin farm now this hoglin farm is basically a food farm because hoglins are a really good source of pork chop you can see that this also uses a game mechanic is that warp fungus actually squares hoglins so what happens here whenever a hoglin actually spawns onto the spawning platform it will run away it will try to run away from these warp fungi it will actually run over these trap doors and it will fall into the lava. Now when it falls into the lava, it causes the hoglins to catch fire. Now also down there, there is a drop chute below this lava, which you cannot see from the top. Now this drop chute should be at least 43 blocks tall, so that the hoglins will die on in instantly when they fall. When they actually fall, they give you cooked pork chop and they also drop your leather. And I just saw one hoglin fall straight through. Alright, they give you lots of cooked pork chop, they give you lots of leather. So that is a really good thing. And also I have built it over the nether roof so that efficiency, efficiency increases. You look at this. Okay, there's there's definitely a piglin spawning somewhere. I don't know how these piglins spawned. But you need to build the, these farms over the top of a crimson forest. Now you need to make sure that every part of your hoglin farm is over the top of a crimson forest. Like you can start from one corner. I am turning on the F3 screen. You can look at the left side of my screen. There is the biome which is being shown and it's crimson forest all over. You will go from one corner to the other. You are going to check if your space actually falls completely within the crimson forest. Now this is actually for the efficiency of the farm because hoglins only spawn in the crimson forest. And also we need to light things up because you know uh, other mobs do not spawn like piglins. That, that guy. Where it come from? I don't even know. <laughs> Alright. Hoglins will spawn up here and you may if you want to afk you might afk but you might need to afk real high because you don't want any other mobs under the nether roof to actually be able to spawn you should be at least 128 blocks and look at how many hoglins are there this is a really efficient farm and since they are also burning while they are falling it will actually give you a cooked pork chop so basically it means you don't need to cook the stuff in a furnace and all of those hoglins up there means there will be lots of look at that 48 cooked pork chop in just the amount of time that i used to talk with you and that is a lot so this is basically a farm you should try out in the nether and uh, also try to build it over the nether roof so that you know it's much more look at so many hoglins but also there's a lot of piglins here which don't which uh, i don't think should spawn here and also i've also added some fences here on the side so that these hoglins while they run out of control they just don't walk off the you know they just don't walk off the platform which will cause some losses in the rates and uh, these piglins i don't really know why did they spawn i completely lit up this entire place i used shroom lights but they still spawned i don't know how all right i think that's enough showcasing for this hoglin farm now let's move on with our next thing in this list wait i actually noted that the light level of shroom light is 12 okay so it seems like the shroom light has a bit lesser amount of light level so i guess you should actually replace all the shroom light i am going to be using uh glowstone for this farm because glowstone is actually the brightest light source in the game and if i look at this now okay it's still 12. it's really strange i think i think that shroom light is still better right <laughs> maybe i can even use some torches um you know, it's just some troubleshooting and uh, let's try to place some torches here. What is going to happen? Now it is definitely brighter. Okay, it seems like torches are the best source of light in the game. So I would recommend using torches. So, okay, now let's move on. Now for our next farm, we are back in the overworld because this farm actually does not require being in the nether. And this farm is for the new kinds of wines now here i have a twisting wine farm but you can also make a weeping wine farm now the difference between them is that 
uh, weeping vine will actually grow downwards while the twisting vines will actually grow upwards so you need to basically flip this entire thing down now this actually uses flying machines to harvest this uh, the vines and also to say that there is only a small chance for weeping vines when broken to actually drop their block when you actually mine them so I need to turn so this farm needs to be quite a large farm now for the testing we need to go down here and we're going to press this button so if you press this button this will actually activate our harvesting mechanism or the flying machine that will harvest our mines and it, it might be a bit laggy for a server you can see we have dropped all of our twisting vines and a minecart hopper is actually going to collect everything back again now there will be a bit of lossage because it seems like some of the vines have actually fallen out of the farm quite far off because we are using slime blocks and they are actually pushing this through the gaps well there might be an easy fix is that I can just cover this place up with some glass or some other blocks but as you can see our hopper minecart has reached here it has returned and we can see that we have some of our twisting vines falling through and we might also have a lot we have a lot of twisting vines from this farm at least a full hopper almost a full hopper of twisting vines now that is a really good farm then and then basically you can even change this and you can make it for the weeping vines as well except that these need to grow downwards and also you might want to place your flying machine upwards near the ceiling so that more and more weeping vines are actually dropped from this farm and then you also don't need to have the hopper minecart collection system because basically the vines will fall down and you can just have a collection of hoppers and that will just pick up all of your stuff back again now you can see that there is some of it actually missing I mean some of it has not yet been dropped so actually you can power this button but once again I'm actually going to grab a button here I'm going to actually place it right there then it can just go and get more of the twisting vines along with itself so that's the vines farm now let's move on to obviously the nether update is not only about making different farms there are also a couple of redstone changes which are all which are also quite handy such as being able to power through target blocks or redirecting redstone towards target blocks now this thing is really handy because I mean this thing is not that handy because <laughs> target blocks are solid blocks I mean there are so many solid blocks how does it even matter but the real good thing about target blocks is that you can actually now redirect redstone towards target blocks which is quite nice because since they are pos uh, since they are solid blocks you can actually make a redstone line you can actually manipulate it to go in any sort of direction you want it to go to and power so basically this line would not actually power this torch or that piston if this line went straight through and they were only normal solid blocks but now using target blocks you can actually redirect the redstone line which definitely is not going towards these two components but now it will power these two because it's actually directed towards the target blocks which will actually in turn power the piston and that torch behind respectively making it extend and that turning off also you might recognize this now this is actually the redstone dot the familiar redstone dot from 1.15 but this is uh, this has an added functionality is that you can actually right click a redstone dot and turn it into a redstone cross now the redstone cross is actually there it was added in the snapshot 20w18a and uh, now in snapshot 20w21a a new functionality had been actually added which was that you can actually change the redstone cross between a dot and a cross now the dot is actually less functional because the dot only powers downwards and it does not it no longer powers sideways so basically you can have this kind of a redstone dot here this will prevent powering some other things you might want to do uh, something with the redstone such that it only powers downwards this is the way you do it but redstone in a cross shape acts like normal redstone pre 1.16 and uh, this will power in all four directions as well as downwards so this is actually a redstone component this is more of a decoration because people did like this kind of a redstone dot for decoration all right let's move on to our next thing now the nether update definitely brings with itself some changes in game mechanics and that could mean that some of our things such as our old redstone farms or redstone contraptions might actually break and some also some manual farms maybe I don't know so as you can see I'm in my redstone testing world which consists of all of the different redstone contraptions that I might have made and showcased you and you can see in front of me is this recognizable 3x3 piston door and if you actually want to see the tutorial for making this there will be a link on the top of the screen right now so this door is actually a 2 wide design 
and it also relied on a certain bug which has been fixed in 1.16 and it is relating to this portion here. You can see that this redstone here is running up this transparent block which is in, in this case is a slab but in 1.15 or lower this redstone dot actually this redstone line actually behaved like a redstone dot which means it actually powered this piston even though it no, doesn't seem like that that it should power that I don't think so no <laughs> now it's actually packed uh, sorry that bug has been patched and since that is the case this door will actually break because you see this door retracts with the exception of this block here so how I need to fix this and uh, maybe I can just do something like this I can just extend this line here so that this redstone powers that piston so basically you can just troubleshoot your different bugs inside of new inside of your previous redstone contraptions and that would be quite nice because if you have a redstone base you won't like to have some faulty devices in your redstone base right <laughs> you will definitely not like that so basically you would just fix this like that and uh, yeah that's that's all for all of this so with that we have reached the end of this video and i hope you liked this video and if you did please leave a like down for this video and also be sure to subscribe to the plutonium place channel and ring the bell for the notifications of new videos and thanks for watching